So how are we going to do this? Now, let's just briefly think about um, what our component should be actually doing. Now, our component is meant to be used in cases where you have some behavior that is probably happening somewhere else in your system. Yeah, I don't know, you want to save something, you want to, um, you want to trigger some game action, like here maybe you want to do something where you want to get the confirmation of um, the user if he really wants to do this because it might be something, uh, something important. Um, so what we have to provide is basically two kinds of uh, functionalities. One that always happens when we press the confirm button and the other one that always happens when we press the cancel button. And for that, we can kind of use what the buttons themselves give us, but we have to put some functionality level above and um, provide a way to um, to access some confirm functionality and some cancel functionality. Now, to um, understand that a little bit better, what we can do, we can have a look at the documentation for other controls and how they do something like that. And for example, when you have a button, this is a normal uh, button in UI Toolkit, one of the controls that is built in. And when you take a look how how it um, does uh, its behavior, what you can do with a button is basically you can click on it and not really uh, anything more. And so what the button does, it provides you an, an event, some kind of special event that is particularly there for the button that's called clicked. And then you can subscribe for the button from uh, from outside, kind of from whatever class, whatever um, script is uh, building the button and is adding the button. It can subscribe to this clicked event and um, trigger some custom behavior. And that's basically something similar that we want to do. Just for our case, we not only have one kind of clicked thing, and we don't want to call this clicked because when you have a button, you expect it to be clicked. We have kind of this level above for our uh, pop-up window where we want to clearly say we have two kinds of behavior. One behavior is um, is there when you want to confirm and one behavior is there when you want to cancel. So let's try to implement that. Now, let's go back to our script. Let's see what we have. We have those two buttons and we want to put um, a level of functionality above the buttons. But in order to reach this functionality, we have to use what the buttons are giving us. So we have to take um, the one of the buttons, the confirm button, use its clicked event and say we want to do something when we click the confirm button. And that will be our on confirm behavior. I cannot type, I'm really sorry. This must really look embarrassing, but um, we will get there. Okay, we will do the same thing with the cancel button. Just this time we are having a on cancel behavior and we don't have those yet. I, I just, that that's why you get those errors because we don't have um, those defined yet. That's what we have to do next. We have to go out of the constructor and create two methods, private void on confirm. And private void on cancel. So we are now able to react um, to someone pressing our button. When we call the confirm button, we are doing this here. When we call the, uh, the cancel button, we are doing this here. Now, obviously, um, a really bad idea would be to just um, hard code some behavior in here and um, just do whatever you want to do um, inside of your component. Um, I hope that we all agree that this would be very bad because then your component would be useful exactly for one time and uh, every time you want to um, 
you want to change this behavior, you would have to write this part, but you, have, you would have to write some kind of copy of your component and do another custom component. And the point of actually doing this component is to, to avoid just that, to, to be able to reuse this component in several uh, ways. For example, if you want to um, send an email, you could use this component. If you want to save a file, you could use this component. If you want to trigger some game action, I don't know, um, delete a character or something, you could also use this component. That's what we want to do. So we have to provide a way to the outside of the component to be able to react to confirm or cancel behavior. And for that, um, we can use what, what, what UI Toolkit is also using for uh, the other controls like um, the button, as we saw in the documentation before. Um, we can provide an action. Let's call this confirmed and an action cancelled. And obviously, if you don't really know what those things are, um, you should um, you should do some research. There are uh, nice tutorials on YouTube, um, what you do with actions and delegates in, in Unity. Um, but basically, what this, this provides the possibility for someone calling or creating this, this window to um, to subscribe a different function that will basically react to this. So every time that this um, event will fire your function that um, we will do this later, we will um, subscribe this function later. Every time it fires, this function will be called. And so with that, um, what we can later do when we have those two use cases, we want to send an email or we want to save a file. On In one place of our code, we will have a pop-up window that will um, that will subscribe a function that is sending an email. And in, in a different section of your code, you will um, have a different pop-up window and it will uh, subscribe a function that will save a uh, file or do some third thought or however many other behaviors you want to trigger. And in order to do that, the only thing that we now have to add is once we click one of those buttons, we actually want those events to trigger. And for that, we will, we can write it like this, which what will check, uh, which will check if there is, um, if there is a subscriber to, uh, to this event. And if there is a subscriber, it will invoke the event. The same thing here. And that's it. That's all we have to do. And basically in those two lines of code and in this little section, we created the possibility to have custom functionality um, subscribe to those two events. Now in order to actually use this, we need to do one more thing. We need to, um, for one, um, link, uh, link, this up in some way with our actual um, with our actual game view and with our actual um, unity game object here we we didn't do anything that is kind of uh, creating this window yet that's what we have to do and then we have to provide some um, some very simple functionality that is subscribing to the buttons so in order to do that we will go one level up to our pop-up window folder here create a new script call this pop-up setup or test or whatever you want to, do, to call this let's open this in unity we will also only need the ui uh, the ui elements lib here Can really not type it's really horrible okay um that should work now we had some namespace i think in our pop-up window let's use the same namespace here yes pop-up test so 
let's move the class in here. Okay. And now, um, if you used UI Toolkit, you've probably done this a couple of times. First of all, we have to link um, link our UXML, this, this little test file that we're working on, um, with, with the actual um, component on the game object. So for that, we take um, an instance of this UI document. Now we have to take the root visual element, which we get like that. And now obviously we, we don't have any kind of game or any kind of uh, background logic here that is actually happening. So we are just testing this. So for our purposes, it's enough to just um, add a pop-up window once we uh, start um, our game view. So we take a pop-up window. This is exactly the component that we uh, were writing. Not the component, the control. I'm sorry, I'm doing this all the time. Um, so we gave ourselves an instance of this control, of our custom control. And now the question is, how do we get functionality. 